Welcome to Sunshine Cathedral's Queer God Squad. It's Monday, March 18th, 2024. I am Reverend Dr. Darrell Watkins, the senior minister here at Sunshine Cathedral. I am Reverend Dr. Robert Griffin, the executive minister. Faith and religion can be complicated for the LGBTQ plus community. Surveys show that evangelical faith is the justification for the greatest attacks on the LGBTQ plus community. I am Reverend Kevin Tisdall, the Minister of Education. The Queer God Squad is going to explore our religious community. Let's explore the big news of the day and what it means to you. I'm Reverend Dr. Ann Atwell, the Minister of Connections. This is live and then we are available on demand. We are available on all smart televisions and your favorite social media. At Sunshine Cathedral, we're here to tell you that you are God's miracle, not God's mistake. This is the Sunshine Cathedral Perspective. Is Pope Francis' gender ideology the, quote, ugliest danger of our time, end quote. In a recent address, Pope Francis has once again condemned gender ideology as the ugliest ideology of our time, warning that it erases the fundamental distinctions between men and women. Speaking at the International Symposium, um, Man, Woman, Image of God, held at the Vatican, the Pope emphasized the importance of recognizing the inherent difference between genders stating that to negate these differences is to negate humanity itself. Organized by Cardinal Mac Outlet and the Center for Research in Anthropology of uh, Vocations, the symposium aims to devolve into the anthropological dimensions of the vocations. Pope Francis, who was battling cold, delegated Monsignor Filippo Campanelli to deliver his address on his behalf. In his remarks, the Pope highlighted the rational character of human vocation, emphasizing the every, that every individual is called to embrace a specific mission with joy and responsibility. He underscored the anthropological truth that humans are created in the image of God and possesses an innate desire for eternity, eternity and happiness. Pope Francis also stressed the importance of prompting, promoting a more effective circularity of vocations within the church, including lay vocations, ordained ministers, and consecrated life to the foster hope in a world overwhelmed by despair. In closing, the Pope urged participants to courageously seek God's will in their work. He emphasized that a living faith requires active discernment and a willingness to take risk. No true words have ever been spoken. <laughs> um, but I do think he's probably correct that it is the ugliest danger of our time. It's this uh, trying to say that there's only what the outlining of two genders and that's it. But to, for the public to really continue to take these stances, I mean, he's really been taking a lot of stances, a lot of outspoken positions lately. And I have always said, I hope he lives. I hope he lives. I hope he lives. And to really, uh, uh, even as the Monsi is speaking with have to, to really just call people back to what is about human dignity, respect for each other and for love and let people be themselves. And I hope that um, the Catholic Church will continue to live in that, into that message. But on this one, he's not, he's not, he's, he's, he's gone off yeah. brand. Yeah. 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 He's on this one. He's well, maybe it was my ideological <laughs> warning. <laughs> yeah. On this one, he's gone off brand though, because he's saying that the discussion saying there is more than two genders, that that is, that is problematic, that that is uh, even sinful. And I have to say, I disagree with his holiness. I mean, he's an 87 year old celibate straight cis man who's lived inside the systems of the church his entire life. His perspective is very different from mine. I think he's kind, sincere, wise, compassionate, and on this topic, wrong. He still, uh, in his cisness, believes that cis is the only way to exist. Um, and that is his experience. It's not the only human experience. It's not the only cultural experience. It's not the only social experience. He, and he doesn't realize the pain his words will cause transgender people and how his words will be used to torment trans uh, people for a long time to come. I like him, I respect him, and about this, he is wrong. And I stand with our trans and gender queer and non-binary friends. Some of us share some of their experiences, even if our presentation of difference isn't as obvious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree. You know, I, I know that the Pope, we, we've seen it, we've heard it. The, the Pope has grown on a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. He has become more um, inclusive to women not fully, of course, but but more inclusive. He is more welcoming to uh, the L, 
apparently the LG community, <laughs> uh, um, but excluding a number of our trans and non-binary folks. So my hope on this is truly that maybe he will um, talk to some folks, um, do his work, mm -hmm. and maybe grow on this issue as he has on other issues. You better hurry. Yeah, <laughs> really fast, 87. Yeah. Please make it, it happen, <laughs> make it so. Yeah, it's almost as though he was throwing the right wing of his church yeah, a bone, bone saying, you know, I, I believe in a lot of things that you don't, but I'm going to give you this one. Yeah. And hopefully, as we're saying, there's still a table, human cost to that, though. Yes. Yeah, there really as we're is. saying yeah, at this really table, is. maybe he will realize the pain that he continues to cause so many people within his church and beyond, because that kind of rhetoric, unfortunately, gets people killed. Yeah, yes, it does. It, it, it's not just a matter of policy. It's not just a matter of polity. It's a matter of survival for a whole lot of folk oh, yeah. who don't identify the way he thinks thinks we're supposed to identify. Mm -hmm. At 87 years old, supposedly celibate for all of his life, I don't know that he's the person that we want to go to for ideas about biology and, and things that right. he yep. never learned, never was never taught. So right. come on, step back. And there's stuff that's been poured into his head his whole well, life too. Like, like Jesus, Jesus is a dude. And the church is Mrs. Dude, is Mrs. Jesus, the bride of Christ. Like everything is set up in these binaries. Jesus is, mm -hmm. Jesus is the Lord and, and, and Mary is the queen of heaven. I mean, everything is, is structured in these binaries. Mm -hmm. And uh, so to mess with the binaries is to mess with the language of the church and how they even relate to God. I can see how it would be threatening mm -hmm. and how he's like, as Pope, I've got to, you know, I've, I've got to defend the church about, and the, the church line. is binary, right. you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, but meanwhile, not everyone is though. Yeah. That's right. And, uh, if you're going to make it be like, even the discussion about it is somehow toxic or bad or evil, you're, people are going to get hurt. People are going to get hurt. And let us not forget that forced celibacy is an alternative lifestyle. Yes. Uh, it's not, it's not in the mainstream of things. It ain't natural. And it ain't natural. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yet, uh, you know, you're pretty highly regarded, your holiness. Yeah. And so, uh, let, let, let's have some grace about that sort of thing that, yeah, some things don't look like everything else. Right. But if it's authentic and if it's real, maybe it's okay. And maybe you're not the one to say it's not. Yep. There it is. Well, that's today with the Queer God Squad. We want to thank you for joining us. We're here daily at three to have some fun and to discuss what our LGBTQ plus community is talking about. Sunshine Cathedral is the world's largest progressive queer church. Progressive queer and God are words that naturally should go together. And we are in this together. Remember that. You are God's miracle, not God's mistake. Until next time, we are the Queer God Squad. Goodbye.